Hello everybody and welcome back for part two of my Harbor Freight Dust Collector modification series. In this video, I will be building the structure that will hold the blower motor and the chip separator. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section and let's get started. To begin, I'm cutting all the necessary lengths of 2x4 that will make up the frame of the dust collector structure. The entire frame will be constructed using pocket hole joinery. My pocket hole machine makes quick work of this. To hold the frame together, I'm using 2.5 inch pocket hole screws along with glue. I know that gluing end grain wood isn't normally recommended, but it adds another element of strength to this otherwise strong joint. I follow the same steps to build both the left and right sides of this structure. These lengths of 2x4 will be used to join the left and right sides together. And once again I'm using pocket holes to bring everything together. I actually screwed up here a little and forgot to drill pocket holes on both sides of two of these pieces. When I discovered my mistake I was a little irritated. <laughs> Glue and 2.5 inch pocket screws were also used here to assemble the pieces of the frame.
Unfortunately, the frame was a little out of square, but this will be fixed pretty easily in the next step. Here's a closer look at what I've done so far. Using my miter saw, I'm cutting 45 degree miters on both ends of a piece of 2x4. I make four of these in total. They'll be used to bring the frame back into square. In order to attach them to the frame, I'm drilling pilot holes with countersinks into both ends of each piece. Glue and 2.5 inch pocket hole screws were used to attach these to the frame as well. Now it's time to cut the pieces I will need to support the motor. Again, I'm using 2x4s to construct this part. I'll join these pieces to the frame using pocket holes. Like everything else in this project, I'm using glue and 2.5 inch pocket hole screws to join these to the frame. After drilling pilot holes and countersinks into these cross supports and attaching them to the frame, these will be used to support the motor from underneath. After lifting the motor up onto the supports, I'm attaching them using 1 quarter inch drywall screws and fender washers. I follow the same procedure on both sides to attach the motor. Here's a closer look. That's it for part 2 everyone. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up down below. If you're interested in getting notified of other videos I release in this series or on my channel in general, please hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications by selecting the bell icon. There will be at least one more video in this series, maybe two, so keep an eye out for those. Hopefully everyone is having a great weekend, and I will see you guys next time.